The purpose of this presentation is to provide awareness on the AER's implementation of the new liability policy announced by the government. The presentation will look at the challenges with the current liability management system, an overview of the new liability management framework, which focuses on oil and gas energy activities, a review of the new liability policy announced by the government and the individual components, an introduction to the licensee capability assessment, LCA, which is a foundational element to the new liability management framework and provide our intended near-term next steps. The AER recognizes that there are many unknowns and concerns on how policy implementation will impact licensees. The AER is still developing the implementation plan for components such as the mandatory closure spend targets, along with additional information on the five-year rolling period and the linkages with the existing area-based closure program. The AER will continue to provide more information on our website and offer opportunities for future engagement. We know that there are broader policy implementation questions. This presentation will focus on introducing the licensee capability assessment. There have been ongoing conversations about liability management with industry and other stakeholders over the past few years. In 2017, Indigenous and stakeholder groups were invited to provide feedback into the review of the liability management framework conducted by the government. The review focused on improving the existing challenges with the liability management system, which will be discussed further in the next slides. The prolonged economic downturn has exposed policy and regulatory gaps in the existing provincial liability management framework and highlighted that the current system is largely reactive when it comes to managing companies. There is an inactive growth rate of 5% for inactive sites. Closure work has not kept pace with this growth. Data has shown that even when the commodity prices were high, industry did not allocate sufficient budget to closure work, as there were no requirements to bring sites to full closure. The AER has a limited evaluation of a licensee's ability to meet its closure obligations as the liability management ratio, LMR, is only focused on two parameters, deemed assets and deemed liabilities. The regulatory interventions for the LMR was triggered when the ratio fell below one with an emphasis solely on security collection. This means the AER efforts was only on a few licensees. When the LMR fell below one, Generally, licensees do not have funds to pay security as they are moving towards financial distress. This collection is too late in the energy development life cycle. Additionally, the AR is limited in the types of security it is able to collect, such as cash or letters or credit. This can impact a company's access to capital and the ability to maintain cash flow that could be used to reduce and remove liability. The Government of Alberta announced policy direction on July 30, 2020. The new policy has been introduced to address some of the gaps with the current system to ensure that the liability associated with end-of-life obligations is managed by industry. The GOA and the AER have distinct roles regarding policy development and implementation. The Government of Alberta sets the policy direction and provides oversight. The AER is responsible for implementing the policy, monitoring progress, and enforcement. This includes determining how the policy will be implemented to ensure alignment with the intent of the policy set by government. It requires that the AER and the government to work collaboratively to ensure the implementation of the policy will meet the outcomes established. The Government of Alberta policy encompasses the full life cycle of energy development. The GOA has directed the AER to create new liability management programs based on the new policy. The new policy introduces five components. The first is the licensee capability assessment. The LCA is a foundational piece of the liability management framework and is a significant change to better understand how the industry is managing their liability obligation. The LCA will allow the AER to use business intelligence to better understand and support decision making to ensure licensees are meeting the regulatory and liability obligations. The LCA will be replacing the AER's current licensee liability rating program, the LLR, with a more holistic assessment of licensees' capability 
and performance across a number of parameters. The initial focus is for the oil and gas sector. The second policy component is the licensee special action. This allows for the proactive management of licensees to ensure that they are addressing regulatory and liability obligations throughout the life cycle of energy development. The third policy element is the inventory reduction program. This includes providing the AER the authority to establish a mandatory closure target and continue to leverage the voluntary spend target through the area-based closure program to ensure industry is reducing their liability on the landscape in a timely manner. This policy component also includes the creation of a mechanism for landowners to nominate sites for closure. The fourth policy element is legacy and post-closure. This implements a process to address legacy and post-closure sites, or sites that were abandoned, remediated, or reclaimed before current standards were in place, and sites that have received reclamation certificates and the operator's liability period has lapsed. Government will be establishing a panel on how to address legacy and post-closure site liability and to further explore this issue and identify potential solutions and funding mechanisms. The fifth policy component is expanding the mandate of the OWA, which is the Orphan Well Association. This was set out in the Liabilities Management Statutes Amendment Act, Bill 12, which came into effect June 15, 2020. The AER continues to work with the OWA on these changes. In order to implement the policy changes announced by the GOA, the AER will implement the changes in phases. The AER is working with the government to ensure the specific scope of the policy components are understood and to align the delivery timelines with the magnitude and the complexity of the change to the liability management framework. The scope of the new liability management framework for the AER is for all activities that the AER regulates or could be regulating in the future. As you can see from the diagram, there are five key energy activities that we regulate. Oil and gas, in situ, pipelines, coal mines, and oil sands mines. The liability policy announced by the GOA is focused only on the oil and gas sector. Portions of the policy, for example, closure targets, apply to in situ and pipeline activities. However, there are still gaps in how these two activities are managed. For example, there is currently no liabilities assigned for pipelines under Directive 11. The two activities in gray, oil sands mining and coal mines, are not addressed by the policy. The in situ, pipelines, coal mines, and oil sand mines also need enhancements to their liability management aspects to ensure the regulatory system enables AER to require industry to mitigate the magnitude and likelihood of potential liability exposure to Albertans. As a result, the AER needs to build a fulsome, integrated action plan that addresses liability across all current regulated areas. As discussed earlier, the GOA policy encompasses the full life cycle of energy development. The licensee capability assessment will be leveraged throughout all stages of decision making. The business intelligence will be used to assess licensees through the licensee special action to ensure they are capable of managing and addressing their regulatory and liability obligations from exploration to closure. This oversight will include determining appropriate mitigation options when needed. The inventory reduction program is one of the new mitigation tools that will be available to the AER and includes closure targets and an opt-in mechanism for landowners to nominate sites in the latter half of the life cycle. When there is no responsible party to appropriately manage and close the assets, the OWA steps in with its expanded authorities through Bill 12. As noted earlier, there continues to be policy gaps as not all infrastructure and sites can be orphaned to the OWA. Hence, the need to evaluate processes for legacy and post-closure sites. The AER has been working with the government on addressing the gaps in the current liability management system, which eventually led to the policy announcement. The policy announcement is aligned with the AER's current strategic goal, which is to mitigate the magnitude and likelihood of potential liability exposure to burdens. As part of this strategic goal, the AER recognizes a paradigm shift is needed by industry to take an economics interest to self-drive the reduction of liability throughout the life cycle. 
This includes innovation in the closure space by developing new technology, as well as completing more area-based closure projects, which efficiently uses closure budget by finding opportunities to collaborate with other companies and realizing economies of scale. The LM framework vision is based on the policy announcement and now supports the intent of energy development to be regulated through the entire life cycle. This takes a holistic approach to encourage proactive liability reduction through timely closure work. What are we trying to achieve? We want a consistent framework to holistically evaluate a license ability to meet its liability and regulatory obligations. This includes ensuring licensees are reducing their liability while they are financially capable by performing timely closure work. There are three guiding principles for the new liability management framework. By leveraging the licensee capability assessment, regulatory decisions are driven by business intelligence. Reducing liability by focusing on activities and licensees that have the greatest impact on liability and mitigating risks associated with financially distressed licensees. In order to follow through with the policy direction from the government, the AAR requires rule changes to support policy implementation. These rule changes will provide the AAR the ability to collect financial information and keep it confidential. This supports the implementation of the LCA. And to set specific closure targets as part of the Inventory Reduction Program. The AER needs to make changes to regulatory documents. The first step is to revise Directive 67, which outlines requirements for eligibility for acquiring and holding energy licenses and approvals. These revisions will include the requirement to submit financial information to support maintaining eligibility. The second step is to revise Directive 6 to enable the transition away from the licensee liability rating to the LCA which allows for the holistic assessment of licensees and their capabilities to manage their regulatory and liability obligations through the energy development life cycle. We will be focusing on other regulatory documents that also need to be revised and to replace the LLR program with LCA. This requires additional rule changes and directive enhancements to Directive 1, Requirements for Site-Specific Liability Assessments in Support of the AER's Liability Management Programs, Directive 11, the Licensee Liability Rating, LLR Program, Updating Industry Parameters and Liability Costs. Directive 24, the Large Facility Liability Management Program. Directive 75, Oil Field Waste Liability Program. Directive 68, ERCB Security Deposits. As the AER evaluates the policy direction, New requirements may need to be developed and implemented to provide direction to licensees. An example may be for the opt-in mechanism. As we have already highlighted, this is a significant change in the liability and closure space. In the existing framework, LMR is limited evaluation of a licensee's ability to meet its closure obligation as the ratio LMR is only focused on two parameters. In the future framework, LCA Business Intelligence will support a holistic assessment of the licensee's capability to address regulatory and liability obligations. In the existing reactive response to liability management, this is only focused on few licensees when their LMR falls below one or through a transfer application. Future Proactive licensee management will focus on all licensees throughout the energy development life cycle, considering financial capability and risk assessments and their closure performance. In the existing, security collection was the primary mitigation strategy that was triggered by the LMR, and generally licensees do not have the funds to pay as they are moving towards financial distress. Future. Mitigation strategies leverage results of a holistic LCA assessment of the licensee, where the primary driver is to reduce liability through closure work, and that is through the closure spend target. There will no longer be a single trigger as there was with the LMR. Existing decisions are based on the specifics of an individual regulatory application. Future decisions will also include the use of LCA business intelligence. Licensees' financial capabilities will be evaluated to ensure regulatory and liability obligations can be met prior to making decisions such as transfer applications. In the existing framework, 
OWA delegation is limited to abandonment and reclamation. In the future, the OWA delegation is expanded to include the full life cycle, reasonable care and custody, and maintenance and operation to conserve assets. We want to discuss and highlight the integration of the policy component across the AER as well as throughout the life cycle of energy development activities, since we all know activities undertaken can increase or decrease liability. The licensee capability assessment is the backbone for the implementation of the liability policy across the energy development life cycle. Proactive licensee management includes the two policy components of licensee special action and inventory reduction programs. It provides proactive licensee management using LCA business intelligence to focus on those licensees who are still financially capable to ensure they are meeting regulatory enclosure requirements and on those who are financially distressed who will be proactively monitored to ensure protection of the public and the environment. The LCA assessment's results supports identification of appropriate mitigation measures and regulatory decisions. For liability management, the mitigation options focus on the licensees reducing their liability and the impact of the liability on the landscape. This will include the inventory reduction program, which will be introducing new regulatory tools such as the closure targets. For compliance activities, there will be the use of a suite of compliance tools when the AER can no longer use proactive mitigation options. This will need to consider the financial viability of a licensee, the magnitude of liability, and any environmental and public safety concerns. This could include the use of security collection and the reasonable care and measures introduced through Bill 12 as licensees transition into reactive licensee management. For reactive licensee management, we use all of the existing and new regulatory tools through Bill 12. In addition, the LCA business intelligence will support the decision when appropriate to transition inventory to the OWA. To provide a high-level introduction to the licensee capability assessment, there will be two elements that will need to be used to assess licensees holistically, the financial capability and risk assessment and licensee performance indicators. Under the first element, there are two parts we need to understand. The first part is to assess the licensee's level of distress and in turn financial capability. This part is about confirming a licensee's likelihood of financial distress based on the submitted licensee financial statements. From the financial statements, common financial ratios are calculated, which gives us an indication of financial distress. These ratios represent measures such as a company's profitability over time, their ability to liquidate cash, and if all money is tied up in debt. This will inform the AER on whether a licensee can fund their regulatory obligations with a main focus on closure work. The second part is to understand a licensee's relative magnitude of liability. The liability is estimated by using Directive 11. However, liability estimates will be improved over time as we incorporate the industry-submitted closure spend data. The risk assessment uses the licensee's financial information and their relative liability. Understanding these two parts enables the AER to assess what the licensee is financially capable of doing and how much liability they need to take care of. By taking this approach, the assessment is familiar to the financial community and it is not overly complicated. Based on understanding the level of distress and the relative magnitude of liability, licensees will be positioned somewhere in this heat map. As there are over 700 licensees that the AER will be monitoring, both level of financial distress and the magnitude of liability will determine who the priority licensees are that need to be monitored. We also have two initial focus areas. One, for those licensees that can have the greatest impact on reducing their overall liability in the province and are capable of doing something about it. This is one of the guiding principles of the liability management framework. Second, for distressed licensees that there is appropriate oversight on them to ensure the environment is protected and the public is safe if the AER needs to transition them to the OWA. The second element of the LCA is the performance assessment that reflect how well a licensee is meeting their obligations. It currently focuses on how the licensee is managing the administrative, operational, and closure areas of business. These indicators can either support the financial capability and risk assessment previously discussed, 
and or indicate where areas of improvements are needed in the licensee's performance, which provides insight as part of the AER's proactive licensee management program. As the LCA develops and matures over time, the AER will continue to evaluate how new information will be incorporated into the LCA assessment. For example, we are currently looking into asset value. The business intelligence from the LCA helps the AER understand the licensee's level of distress and relative magnitude of liability while evaluating a licensee's closure performance to ensure licensees are managing their liability to bring it down. The primary driver is to ensure licensees perform closure work in a timely manner through the use of closure targets. If the licensees don't address their closure, the AER will apply the appropriate mitigation options considering the other regulatory and compliance tools existing and new. Throughout this presentation, we hope it has become clear on how each of the elements of the new policy is integrated into the energy development life cycle, using a holistic approach to assess a licensee's ability to ensure they're addressing their regulatory and closure obligations. The decision process will include the assessment of licensees by leveraging the LCA business intelligence to help with the identification of risks and potential mitigation options. Reviewing the risks identified and applying the appropriate mitigation options from new and existing regulatory tools. Then we take action. We issue our regulatory decision. The results of this decision will then be fed back into the LCA business intelligence through ongoing monitoring to support the feedback loop to ensure that industry is addressing their obligations and that the mitigation options and decisions are achieving the intended outcomes. There are many aspects of this work that still require further development in order to support the intent of the liability policy, which leads us to our next steps. Our next steps include, in early 2021, the publication of Draft Directive 67 for stakeholder feedback. These revisions will include the requirement to submit financial information. The AR will also provide additional information regarding the policy implementation approach and progress on our website. Targeted industry engagement on the licensee capability assessment will also occur. Once again, the AAR acknowledges that there are many unknowns for industry on how the policy implementation will impact them. While the AAR is still developing the implementation plan for the policy components, there will be future opportunities for engagement. Based on the feedback, we will continue to refine how the policy is being implemented to ensure alignment with the liability management framework outcomes.